What is going on guys? Randall Thor19, the Mount Million back again with another video. How's everybody doing today? I'm doing pretty good. We got an interesting video today on Rand's Rant. Uh, so let's get right into it. I had a different video scheduled for today, but this this news hit, so I had to move it. So hopefully that video will probably either come out tomorrow or the next day, depending on the news. So as you guys can see, the big news of the day is Microsoft launching Xbox Game Pass. Uh, so if any of you are familiar with EA Access, it's kind of similar. So EA Access, you pay $5 a month or $30 a year, and you can you get all their games in the library. You can download and play. You also get access to games, uh, you know, 10 hours early for like a demo. Or not 10 hours, but you get to play it 10 hours early, a few days early, as well as... Uh, um, I mean, like discounts on games, right? So it seems like Microsoft has taken that idea. They've kind of merged it with kind of PlayStation Now, which is now just like completely worthless. Like PlayStation Now, in my opinion, you know, it was bad before. Now it's might as well just be dead. Uh, so Xbox Game Pass is here, kind of rolls those two things together into an Xbox thing with, with Microsoft and a whole other bunch of pub publishers they have put together. So basically the gist is you pay $10 a month, $10 a month, and you'll have access to over 100 great games. Now it is in preview right now, Xbox preview program, which is uh, in the alpha ring, which I am a member of. Uh, there's not that many games to test out, you know, they're testing it, so, but man, this... This is some good news. This is something I've always wanted. Because before this gen, I, 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 I tended to rent a lot of games. You know, Gamefly, uh, things like that. Because there's a lot of games to play and I couldn't afford all of them. And I always wondered to myself, you know, these publishers and the developers always complained about GameStop. And they always complained about people renting games. And I always thought, like, why don't these companies do a subscription service where instead of the money going to, uh, you know, GameStop and Gamefly or what have you, it goes right into their pocket. And PlayStation tried answering that with PS Now. It's a subscription service, you know, when they bought Gaikai. And basically you pay a subscription and you can stream games from a central location, from a server to your system and play it. Now Xbox has made this even better. Because now you pay the fee and you download the games to your hard drive. So there's no streaming, so the whole latency issue is completely gone. This is like a million times better than PlayStation now. And this is something that I would have loved, you know, years ago. And I could see a lot of people using this because EA Access, I know there, it has some haters because it's not on PlayStation and a lot of people don't like what's not on their system. I mean, that's just a fact. But it offers a lot of for such a low, you know, like, it offers a lot of value for such a low amount, right? You basically pay, you can pay $5 and you can download 30 games. And here, I mean, if you just wanted to play a couple games, you could pay, um, you could pay $10 for just one month and download whatever amount of games you could play and get your fill and be done, right? Uh, so let's look at who we got, we got, Look at the publishers are on board. We got 2K, we got 505 Games, we got Bankai Namco, we got Capcom, Codemasters, Deep Silver, Sega, uh, THQ, Warner Brothers, Microsoft, and you know Microsoft's own own game. So there's going to be like, Halo 5 is probably going to be part of it. You know, Sense of Overdrive and things like that. This is this is huge. This is absolutely huge in my opinion. Um, the only real negative I see when reading this article is that games will kind of uh, move in and out of availability, right? Um, so one month Halo 5 might be available uh, to, to, to play, and next month it might not. So I, I'm not a fan of that one simple thing, of some games being available some months and some games not being available the next month so that's about the only p negative i see about this and i already know i can see some people saying that like i didn't want gaming to become a subscription service but if the price is low enough i don't really think that matters right uh i think ten dollars a month is a fantastic 
price for what you're getting. Uh, it's not, you know, because there was concerns that they were just going to add this on top of, you know, if they were going to do something like this, it would be added on top of, like, uh, Xbox Live Gold into, like, an Xbox Live Platinum, which would have been $100 a month, right? But they didn't, right? You still have gold, and I don't think you need gold for this. Um, you just need the nine ninety nine a month, so it's a separate transaction. So this is even better, you know. Like you don't have to pay more for gold, you know, uh, to get those perks. This is just nine dollars, the ten dollars a month. You have access to all these games, it's better than PlayStation Now because you can download them to your to your system. You don't got to worry about your internet connection and, and the speeds. It's just play whatever you want to your heart's content for such a low. That is, it's like Netflix for gaming, on demand gaming. Now, hopefully, uh, more uh, if this is successful, like EA Access is successful, we'll see more companies hop on board. Uh, you know, I'd like to see like e well, obviously, I don't think EA would be on there because they have their own subscription service. But like Ubisoft, Activision, that would be cool. But some of those developers prob or publishers probably have their own plans, so it's not surprising they're not part of it. But man, if you're an Xbox owner, if you want to taste a bunch of different games and, and things like that. Uh, this seems like a amazing deal. I'll probably uh, up the subscription on the preview program just to have it, because, I mean, why not? Maybe there's a game I haven't played. Another thing I should mention also is that if you, if you do do this, uh, you can also buy the games at an exclusive discount for Xbox Game Pass members. So that seems like an interesting idea as well. All in all, I think this is a fantastic move. It's very, in my opinion, pro-consumer. Um, it, it, you know, it takes the idea of competition from Sony and improves upon it, right? Because now, uh, in my opinion, this is better than PlayStation Now. The pricing is better. Uh, the fact that you download it's better. Uh, and this is, what, this is why competition is so great in um, the video game industry, right? Everybody's fighting for your dollar. You know, when, when Sony was fighting with Microsoft for the online thing, they created P PSN Plus, right? Or, yeah, PSN Plus to get the free games. Microsoft had to counter uh, and offer their Xbox Live Gold. Sony offers PlayStation Now. Microsoft offers their own, but even better. I love the idea of these corporations fighting for our dollar and to keep their customers with them instead of going over to somebody else's. So, it, it's going to be interesting to see what Sony does to counter. Do they do they scrap PlayStation now? I mean, I already know they removed it uh, from, you know, like PlayStation 3 and things like that. You know, this is kind of like the direct response to it. But it's... I love it when corporations fight over our dollars and we win. This is a win for Xbox gamers and gamers in general. Because now, you know, if you buy an Xbox and you don't have any games, right? Like, someone just goes to the store, picks up an Xbox One... I have an Xbox One now, right? This is this this scenario is just so amazing to me now because normally your library and the games you can play are tied to how, what you have currently, but now you uh, you know uh, an 18 year old kid or 17 year old kid or somebody or you know a parent buying one for their kid can go to the store, buy an Xbox One, bring it home, pay an extra ten dollars for a subscription service, and have access to a hundred games that they wouldn't normally have access to. To me, that is absolutely amazing, and, and maybe its best feature is that. Uh, and maybe it'll help sell consoles when the word, you know, moves along about this program. Maybe it won't, but I think it's absolutely great. I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more content, and I will see everybody later.